Well, the SABC News' New York-based correspondent spoke with Dr. Mishek Motize about the, at times, controversial role that rating agencies play in the context of developmental states like South Africa. Sherwin Bryce, please joining us now. Sherwin, great to have you with us as always. And they have been controversial. I remember when the rating agencies were rating the debt that caused the financial crisis as triple A. Then we come to South Africa and we are are now across three big agencies, S&P, Moody's and Fitch. We're in the so-called uh, junk status, those non-investment grades, uh, those, those uh, dim levels. And, and that's seen as negative. Just, just <laughs> explain how important uh, they are right now in our local context. Well, the implications are quite acute, uh, Francis, you'll agree, right? These agencies signal to international investors, to international markets, the state of play in a local economy, in a domestic economy like South Africa. It looks at things like political stability. It looks like fiscal and debt consolidation. Uh, it looks at uh, how, you know, the country's growth trajectory, its uh, large uh, wage bill. And so that really is a barometer that international markets and international investors look in terms of where they want to put their money. You heard the president talk at the AU EU summit recently about the need to drive greater foreign direct investment in South Africa and it's these investors that look at the Fitches and the S&Ps and the Moody's to gauge from an international perspective uh, where they should send their money. It's a question I put to Dr. Mutize. He is a lead researcher uh, with the African peer review mechanism looking particularly at international credit ratings agencies and they're kind of a conduit, a bridge between helping countries meet the kind of expectations that are put forth by these ratings agencies and really uh, helping ratings agencies themselves better understand the African developmental context. I asked him if these uh, uh, credit ratings agencies are a force for good or not. This is what he said. A very uh, positive drive that comes with uh, rating agencies because they have really opened uh, a you know, space for African countries to be able to tap into the international financial markets and uh, have also created some basis for international investors to be able to invest in Africa. So that's a good thing, although there is uh, also a whole lot of issues that uh, they come up with, one of which I've already pointed out, that uh, they've made uh, a borrowing for African countries much more costly than it should. They seem to take a front seat, especially on giving policy signal on how government should implement or should take its next uh, uh, steps in uh, a formulation of policy. And uh, if you look at the inclination of uh, rating agencies, it's more about uh, a contractionary policies all the time, which we have uh, seen as uh, not a universal uh, position that uh, is applicable, especially in the context of development, uh, developing countries. So talking, Francis, they're very much about their bent towards a contractionary uh, position in terms of their advice to economies, making the argument for greater flexibility from these international credit ratings agencies, greater engagement with the national governments uh, for whom they are providing these uh, uh, ratings uh, assessments. And worth noting that Moody's is set again to meet in April on South Africa, so expect some movement there. Uh, S&P, we're told, will evaluate South Africa again in May. Fitch, we don't get a date from them but they tend to follow the other big two, Francis. So, so he brought up that criticism that their advice doesn't always help the economies that they're talking about. What about the critique that they often approach their ratings from a, a negative point of view? Well, I looked at the practical examples of what ratings agencies have in their latest assessments said about South Africa. Take S&P, for example, Francis. They talked about structural impediments are likely to continue to weigh on the medium term, un uh, unreliable electricity supply, don't we all know it, weak investment expenditure, an inflexible labor market with very strong unionization both in the public and the private sectors. Fitch cited progress on fiscal consolidation that increases confidence in government's debt stabilization. And I literally said to uh, Dr. Mutiz, I said, this is the assessment. Uh, how do you evaluate that? Is it fair or not? And this is how he responded. The analysis has some truth in it. Obviously, those issues are uh, some of the issues that government should be uh, addressing. 
But given the position from which rating agencies depart from, there will be already a negative sentiment that will be driving such a, a you know, the conclusion that come out of the analysis. So in the context of our analysis of uh, how the impact of uh, whatever outcome that will come from such a situation is, what is the, uh, the sentiment that the rating agency has already uh, put forward? And in the end, you find that given the nature of the rating, uh, the, the, the ratings work, the, you know, the fundamentals already discount to the sentiment that will be set uh, by the rating agency in its, uh, you know, in its uh, periodic review. So whatever the outcome, investors would have already discounted that this is the position that uh, the rating agency is going to take in the forthcoming uh, uh, review. And a further anecdote, Francis, is really understanding it's not so much the GDP to debt ratio that is the issue, right? They talk about South Africa consolidating at around 89% in the next three to four years. But if you look at a country like the United States that has sort of triple A ratings from all three agencies, their debt to, to GDP ratio is at 133%. So it's not just about how big your debt is. It's very much about whether you'll be able to service that debt or not. And that is then indicative of where these uh, uh, ratings assessments for Francis yeah and the justification for that is that we have a smaller economy so we could be more more vulnerable so and I've heard calls for an African rating agency and there are also these concerns about the global credit rating agencies uh, being highly concentrated uh, the the industry coalescing around Fitch Moody's and, and SMP and it's very hard to get into that space what are you hearing It is very hard to get in that space, but there are some uh, ratings agencies, certainly on the African continent, that exist already that a lot of people don't know about. There's one called the Global Credit Rating, headquartered in Mauritius, one of the first uh, in the African continent. I understand has offices; uh, they have offices in South Africa and a number of other capitals in Africa. There's also a, 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 a Middle East rating and investor services based out of Egypt. Here's the concern: Moody's has bought a stake, a majority stake in GCR, the uh, Global Credit Rating, out of Mauritius and has a major stake now we understand in the Middle East rating agency and the concern of course is as we are seeking to diversify what is essentially a monopoly by the big three they are now acquiring uh, you know these uh, domestic agencies these um, uh, continental agencies Look, to argue, uh, one can argue in, in a sense they are seeking to better understand the domestic local African context, but there is of course concern that these international instruments are now going to be applied in these domestic uh, uh, regional agencies and that of course has raised some concern. Well, I can predict uh, what they're going to say about today's budget, that there's some good news, but we still need economic growth, and that is a general consensus. Thank you very much. Uh, looking at those rating agencies from the U.S., SABC's news correspondent, Sherwin Bryce-Pease.